Instead of yet another refresh or rebrand, AMD is finally launching a brand new series of laptop CPUs. They're headlined by the new Zen 5 architecture, and it's meant to go head to head against the best from Intel, Apple, and even Qualcomm in the Ethernet Lite market. Now, initially, there'll be three processors launching. The Ryzen AI 9 HX370, which has 12 cores and 24 threads that can run from two gigahertz all the way up to 5.1 gigahertz. The HX375 is just a copy and paste job with a faster NPU. Meanwhile, the Ryzen AI 9 365 gets uh, two less cores, four fewer threads, and a 100 megahertz cut in its single core clock speed. It also comes with a cut down 880M integrated GPU. Now, two major things they all share in common are a vastly more powerful NPU than the previous generation and a configurable TDP of between 15 and 54 watts with a nominal default power setting of uh, 28 watts. Obviously, one of the primary goals was to focus on efficiency. So Strix Point and Zen 5 architecture could actually maybe make these processors AMD's Apple M-series moment. But let's take a moment to check out today's video sponsor. The new Tower 300, definitely a unique looking case with a three-piece panoramic front view made specifically for micro ATX motherboards with insane hardware support, like a 420 mil rad fits on the side of the enclosure with this easily removable fan bracket. My four slot GPU fits in no problem with breathing room all around, fully dust protected on all sides too. The optional LCD screen is super fun and the lay flat mode <laughs> brings the Tower 300 into a whole new universe. Definitely explore the color options too, all linked below. Okay, so power means everything, which is pretty obvious considering all the laptops that we've been seeing lately on the market. So the Ryzen AI series, they are meant to light the benchmark charts on fire. They'll even be fighting an uphill battle against Intel's Core Ultra 9 185H because the Intel chip has a much higher power envelope. So the better parallel would be the 165H and the 155H. Also for testing, we got two Zenbook S16s, one with a flagship HX370 and the other one uh, with the 365. This is technically a thin and light laptop, but with a massive 16 inch screen. Um, so its footprint is a lot bigger than typical 13 and 14 inch devices we see in this segment. Um, the specs are almost identical too, with the only major difference other than the huge price gap, uh, which is the memory allocation. But even in its slightly larger chassis, Check out how much little power these chips need. Even with the highest performance modes, they sip a lot less power than the Ultra 7 155H in the XPS 13 and ZenBook 14 OLED. They even save 5 watts versus the Ryzen 7 8840HS, which might not seem like much, but in an ultra compact laptop, it makes a huge difference, guys. I mean, nothing can compete against Apple's M3 processor here, and I also need to mention the X1E 78100. Since Qualcomm doesn't allow for direct power monitoring of their chip, the numbers you see here is how much the entire device pulls from between the USB port and the power brick. So it can't be directly compared to the rest of the results. I should also mention how we're testing other CPUs against uh, the Ryzen AI series, because Input power varies so much from one laptop to another. Uh, it's very challenging to do apples to apple CPU testing across different devices. So our intent was to find as many thin and lights that use similar power envelopes to the ZenBook S16s. And even then, the Ryzen AI laptops were still the least power hungry Windows based devices we have ever got our hands on. And that could be a very, very good thing because if the MacBook Air proves anything, High efficiency CPUs are absolutely critical for ultra portable laptops since low power leads to less heat being produced. So these are two of the coolest running laptops in this category. And more importantly, their peak temperatures are significantly lower than anything we've tested before. These are also some of the quieter laptops here as well, at least in their highest performance mode. But every laptop here sounds like a jet engine compared to the passively cooled MacBook Air. Now, I think you all have one thing in your heads that's also been bothering my mind as well, and that's efficiency isn't everything. Apple's M series major strength is their ability to deliver extremely good performance despite sipping back a lot less power than CPUs from Intel and AMD. I mean, ASUS can run these Ryzen AI chips at just 33 watts, but does that completely kneecap their performance? Well, we'll have to remember, when compared to the ZenBook 14 with its 8840HS, ASUS is using about 15% less power for their HX370 and 365 based laptops, and a whole lot less than similar laptops based on the Ultra 7 155H. Meanwhile, these chips have more cores and threads than Zen 4 series chips. 
Now, those extra cores do count for something though, and in an all-core test like Cinebench R23, the Ryzen AI9-365 is able to at least match the 8840HS while consuming less power. The HX370 sprints to a pretty massive lead as well, and compared to the Intel CPUs, well, it isn't even close, even with those being more power hungry. Moving on to something like Cinebench 2024, and the lead gets even bigger with the two Ryzen AI chips, way, way out in front. The only thing that beats them is the X1E78100. Now, when we switch to single-threaded results, the two Zen 5 chips pretty much dominate everything else out there, except the eight-core M3 processor in the MacBook Air. Apple has just highly tuned that for lightly threaded workloads. And because of that, it'll walk all over most x86 CPUs. Now, one interesting thing to note is that with R2 systems at least, uh, the Ryzen 9 365 was consistently ahead of the 370. But still, what AMD has done here is really, really impressive. And the lightly threaded performance uplift along with some internal changes have some huge benefits in applications like Photoshop, where the new ZenBooks just demolish every other thin and light Windows laptop we've tested. The same thing goes for Lightroom, where the HX370 and 365 give you almost unbelievable numbers that come close to the MacBook Air M3. They look like they're from a completely different era as the Meteor Lake CPUs, but those were launched about eight months ago. In typical Office apps, they perform pretty well, but the spread between all these processors is like splitting hairs. A few seconds here and there, but nothing really extreme, guys. There is one consistent winner though, and that's the Ryzen 9 365's dominance over the technically faster HX370. Now, this shouldn't come as a surprise though, since the Cinebench results showed our 365 system is a little bit faster in single thread performance, and Office apps certainly aren't multi-core focused. When you get into heavy multi-core focused outputs, those extra threads really do come in handy. But I also wanna focus on something else here. Both Ryzen processors are able to get these kinds of results while needing significantly less power than the competition. Their raw performance per watt isn't anything near what Apple can deliver with their silicon, but it is a new high benchmark for Windows-based laptops, and that's saying a lot. AMD's integrated video coding engine, or VCE, also got a shot of adrenaline, in, which is mostly a factor of both chips using the revised RDNA 3.5 GPU architecture. So we're finally, and I mean finally seeing Ryzen processors that can beat Intel's QuickSync. It's pretty amazing. And those upgrades to encoding and decoding also lead to performance in Premiere outputs that drastically improve on what the 8840HS offers, and it can either match or beat the Ultra 7 155H while running at lower power levels. The other area where there's still room for improvement uh, is in Resolve, where yes, the Ryzen AI processors are on another level versus Zen 4, but Intel still delivers better overall performance. Though not by much, since AMD has pretty much closed the gap here. Now, those numbers, as you saw, were basically with these laptops plugged in, uh, but that's the easy part. The reality for most people is completely different because these are mobile devices after all, and they'd be staying away from a plug for most of their life. So did AMD make enough changes to create a battery life champ? Now, while these are good numbers, they only tell half the story. We tried our best to match each processor's power range, but one of the challenges when comparing battery life is these new Ryzen AI processors are tied to a 16-inch 120Hz screen. While we tried to level the playing field as much as possible by setting all the laptops to 60Hz, the S16 size just could account for some of the differences you're seeing here. I can't wait to try one of these Ryzen AI CPUs in a more compact 14-inch laptop. But even then, with a slight handicap, depending on the scenario, they can match the 8840HS. Though in some cases, the system with the older Zen 4 processor pulls ahead. The same thing goes for the Core Ultra 7 155H and the ZenBook 14 OLED. The standings flip-flop depending on the situation. Also, you should completely remove the XPS 13 from the equation here since the battery life capacity on that thing is just absolutely pathetic. The heavy load numbers surprise me though. I mean, they draw some of the lowest amount of power on average, so shouldn't they get pushed to the top in this test? Well, no. Basically, due to their overall efficiency, ASUS is able to run them at higher continual wattage on battery, and that has a net positive effect on their performance, especially when compared to the Ryzen 7 8840HS. 
Ironically, the ZenBook 14 OLED does a pretty good job here as well, which is probably why its heavy load times was so bad. Now, it really does feel like AMD has finally found the small piece of the puzzle when it comes to maintaining good overall performance on battery. But there is a small hiccup. While AMD was pretty far ahead in lightly threaded apps like Photoshop when they're plugged in, their performance relative to Intel, Apple, and Qualcomm takes a dive on battery, guys. Now, while gaming is never ever gonna be a primary use for these thin and light laptops, we've gotta talk about it since the integrated graphics just keeps getting better and better. And in order to keep their leads against what Intel's bringing a bit later this year, um, AMD basically decided to give their RDNA architecture a bit of a refresh. And now it isn't anything major on paper since the 880M gets the same core count as the previous generation uh, 780M, while the 890M gets a pretty big increase to 16 compute units. There's also a pretty big bump in frequencies as well. But did that change make a huge difference in the Ryzen AI series ability to actually game? Well, the answer isn't what you might wanna hear at least not in synthetics like 3 d Mark. In some cases, the new processors are better than the last gen ones, but they still lose to Intel. And in other tests, they actually struggle against the 8840HS, which is a bit of a weird situation since on paper, they have higher core counts and increased frequencies, at least in the case of the HX370. So what's really going on here? Well, that's where we were wondering, and I think this comes down again to power because every one of these laptops treats their CPUs and integrated graphics very differently. The ZenBook S16 might not just be feeding the 880M and 890M GPUs with as much power as the other laptops feed their RGPs, or they simply, are, they're just prioritizing CPU performance and funneling as much as juice as possible to the processor cores rather than the uh, graphics subsystem. And our real world game testing does go a long way towards proving this point, since games that are really CPU focused seem to see the biggest wins for these new Ryzen AI processors. In some cases, the HX370 and 365 are way, way ahead of the previous generation and simply steamroll everything that Intel has to offer. And if you look at Snapdragon, well, they're just on a completely different planet. Now, when you shift gears to games that are a bit more GPU limited, things get a little different. Actually, this looks pretty bad for Ryzen AI processors and RDNA 3.5, since there's some situations where the 8840HS walks all over the new CPUs, while in other games, the Ryzen 9 365 gets consistently beaten, even with its new architecture. So basically, all of this points towards the possibility that Asus might need to look a bit closer at how they allocate power on these new laptops. When their algorithm detects a 3D workload, more juice should be shifted to the integrated graphics, just like they did with the 8840HS uh, in the ZenBook 14 OLED. Because right now, the S16 is at a huge disadvantage in gaming, even though on paper, two Zen 5 processors that we have over here should have a clear advantage in every situation. So at the end of the day, did AMD accomplish what they set out to do? To be honest, I don't think I've ever been excited about these new laptop CPUs for years, minus the ridiculous naming scheme. It's not about what the ZenBook S16 did here. It's more about what it could be doing in the future. Because we haven't seen these Ryzen AI processors in their fastest form yet. These things over here are just running at 33 watts, while their higher end SKUs is just much higher. And you might be wondering why Asus chose a relatively low wattage CPU for these ZenBook laptops. And that's pretty simple. These chips just don't need more. They cleanly beat the Ultra 7 155H in almost every test while consuming less power and it also producing less heat. And that's a major win for AMD and laptop manufacturers as a whole. But that being said, there obviously needs to be work done with their partners to properly direct power towards the integrated graphics engine when a gaming situation pops up. If not, we get what we saw with the S16 basically an underlying RDNA 3.5 graphics core that gets beaten in areas where it should be dominating. There's also some serious irony here as well, and I think this can be a separate video, but the biggest part of AMD's name change is the AI tacked into the Ryzen name, and it has little to no real world use for most buyers. I mean, sure, the new NPU is a beast on paper, but for now, it is just marketing fluff, so don't fall for that BS. Another issue will be availability because there's only gonna be a handful of laptops with Zen 5 around until at least October, 
Uh, even the 365H uh, equipped ZenBook S16, I believe is a Best Buy exclusive. I'll leave links down in the description if you're interested in checking them out. Uh, but uh, I should also mention that the HX370 version will be on the Asus store at first. In the end, I think AMD did something that Qualcomm and Microsoft's ridiculous co-pilot plus PC marketing didn't. They delivered a platform that might have AI chops for the future, but it also features top shelf performance for apps that people are using today. And that's a win for everyone. On that note, thanks so much for watching. I hope you're able to take away everything that you needed to know about AMD's new Ryzen AI HX series of processors. Let us know what you guys think about its performance. I think the competition is getting a little more intense now, so the rest of the year is going to be pretty good. <laughs>